Good Wednesday afternoon. Hump, happy hump day, everybody. Here on the South Side Beat, my name is uh, Chris Halleck. Joining me soon will be Corey Christen, who is covering quite a bit of stuff on the South Side today. <laughs> uh, quite a bit of stuff. It's, uh, man, what a day. Uh, you know it's a day when Mike Tomlin speaks for a second time in a week. And uh, obviously, you know, to kind of rewind to 24 hours ago, uh, George Pickens spoke with the media when Corey joined us yesterday. And he said some very, uh, <laughs> I can't even, I don't even want to put words to it, man. Um, I still can't get, can't get over it. Um, Rick kind of putting it in a good way. I don't even recognize this team. Uh, the, the, the lack of effort, um, leaving a teammate out to dry because you don't want to get, um, uh, you don't want to get injured. Um, <laughs> Matt said, listening to Pickens and hearing from Mendenhall, it's just sad. Uh, Mendenhall was actually before Pickens. Uh, Mendenhall was, uh, that was uh, yesterday morning, I think. Uh, either way, I, I, don't, I, I don't even want to bring that up, honestly. I mean, I, I understand like what, what you're saying, Matt. So I, I, I completely agree with you. I just don't, I don't want to bring that up. Um, anything to do with uh, race stuff, man, like that's just you're playing with fire because you're then you're going to get people saying the wrong stuff. And then we got to, you know, ban people. And I don't want to do that. Um. Darren says, uh, Pickens said what he's allowed to say. The standard is a standard. Um, I, it's hard to argue with that. Like it really is now. Now granted, um, now granted, like it doesn't sound like Mike Tomlin is endorsing what George Pickens said. Uh, I'm going to let Corey kind of come on here and he can get into the details of what Mike Tomlin said. Um, Bad. Bad. Speaking of Corey. Speaking of Corey. Didn't have to do that for very long, huh? We're back, baby. Can yeah. you hear me okay? There's a giant fan blowing. We can hear that, but it's not uh it's not terribly loud. As long as you speak up, I think we're okay. Can you hear me over the fan? You speak up, yes. Okay. I will speak up then. Hello, everybody. Wow, this is uh set up right here. Hello, everybody time let's yeah. do this you're uh yeah uh, yeah uh, chris she says we can hear you the the quality is not great but you know again this is this is the live feel of the show <laughs> this is not uh, oh wow what a week it's been already yeah that's pretty much what we're getting into i honestly I, like and everybody could probably attest to this i did not get a lot of words out I, i'm still kind of baffled uh out about everything i i'm i'm not i'm not good at putting words together right now at least not without you know, I have to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be careful. Without going too far in terms of uh, what you might really want to say, which is curse words that will get us demonetized. Yeah, yeah right. Ro Robert yeah. Robert kind of put it, said Corey is trapped in a tomato can. That's kind of what it sounds like. But Okay, so it sounds like a, a can opener is going to the background. No, it just it sounds like you're inside of a can. Oh, great. That's yeah. not good. Yeah. yeah. You're you're good, it. man. Why not? This is the but, this is what I have. This is what I have to work. Hey, this is the live part of the show. Um, yeah. So George Pickens, you know, we were kind of going on that. George Pickens said what he said yesterday, um, and it's even gotten to the point now. And now, granted, the media requested it, but Mike Tomlin acquiesced and agreed to speak with the media about this situation, and uh, he spoke. Today, Corey, give us a rundown of what Mike Tomlin said uh, just a few minutes ago. And, um, yeah, I, I kind of know, but I, you were there. So I'm going to I'm gonna turn it over to you and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure you <laughs> mentioned, I'm sure you mentioned that Mike Tomlin speaking for the second time in three days doesn't happen often. Well, yeah, that, that's um, I, that's kind of what I kicked off kicked off the show with. Like when Mike Tomlin speaks for a second time, you know it's a you know it's a day on the south side. It's a situation. There's a situation happening. 
Um, and of course, it, it, like I said it in our feed on DKPittsburghSports.com, which if you go there right now, um, you'll read a couple of really important parts for Mike Tomlin. Number one, speaking that George Pickens is a work in progress, which, sure, we can agree on that. We see that. It's very evident. Mm-hmm. And it was very evident coming out of college that mm-hmm. he was going to be a work in progress kind of player. And now, you know, this is all bubbling up on in a really ugly way with what George said yesterday, for those that missed it, about why he didn't block on Jalen Warren's should have been touchdown run because he didn't want a Tank Dell situation to happen. Of course, Tank Dell, receiver from the Texans that um, had a knee injury, sustained a really serious knee injury while blocking for running play and that, yeah. that you know was near the goal line. So, again, Mike Tomlin acquiesces today. He speaks for about seven minutes, literally. Uh, I would say six and three quarters of that was about George Pickens. The other 15 seconds was addressing Kenny Pickett's knee. Or uh, ankle, excuse me, ankle, ankle, ankle. So, uh, Darren, thank you for the five dollars. Uh, Darren says, a "Players, coach has lost players. Con artists conned us on wide open a line of Swiss cheese. Offensive guru uh, got his coordinator fired." All right, it's things are moving right now. They're seven and seven, and, and the sad thing is, the sad truth is, this is where we're at. So, Mike Tomlin considered George Pickens a work in progress, and that his growth is continual. And again, it's no secret that that's what the situation is around George Pickens. Now, Tomlin did say, he did admit that he would like Pickens to be more professional when it comes to addressing why he's not playing well or why he's not giving a darn on the field. And look, it's inexcusable behavior. Mike Tomlin doesn't outwardly come out and say, this is inexcusable, this is BS, this shouldn't happen, all that. Because all of that's already known. Everybody that watches football or that maybe even watches sports or maybe even doesn't watch sports can look at that play and say, what's he doing? Like, what the hell's this? So it didn't really have to, he didn't really have to describe the play. The play is the play. We all know the play. This was more about how George handles himself and how George is handled within that locker room and within this organization. And, yeah, he's talking about growth and development. And he said the way that he deals with the media, essentially, I'm going to paraphrase this, the way that he deals with the media is not the way he deals with the team. That might be fine and all, but the way that he dealt with the team on the football field on Saturday in more than one instance was very poor. So this is where they're at with him. And, look, yeah, maybe he could be a little more detailed, a little more – you know, all of that when it comes to speaking with reporters. I mean, players can speak to reporters however the hell they want, quite frankly, and that's on them to do that. And George Pickens was made available to speak yesterday. This wasn't a, you know, the borrowing a Tomlin phrase. This was a volunteer situation. This was not a hostage situation. You know, he, he, he was, you know, accompanied by a, a PR staffer, and he answered questions with a PR staffer nearby. And with somebody to, Chris, you know this, to keep the lid on the jar, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But when he says the Tank Dell thing, which is not a vulgar thing to say in terms of vulgarity, but it's a vulgar thing to say in the sense of football, right? To prevent that situation, which is very seldom to happen. Yeah, players get hurt in the NFL, but it's not given that he's going to get hurt by blocking for Jalen Warren on that play. So if that's what he's really concerned about, then his head's in the wrong place. Yeah. If Mike Tomlin wants to say otherwise, then I don't know what's spoken about in these walls here. That's private team stuff. So, like, I don't know. If Mike Tomlin is comfortable with the process that he so often talked about today, Mm -hmm. then they're going to want to let this process play out. Yeah. The the, the biggest issue I would have with this – as a player, like if I if I were if I were a teammate in there, the biggest issue I have with it is why are you why are you doing something on the field that is only looking out for your own well being? Like all of the other guys who take the field, whether it's on offense or defense, put themselves at risk every single play. Every single play, you are at risk for injury. Because it doesn't even require contact for you to get hurt. There are non-contact injuries in this game a lot. 
You could take one wrong step and your ACL gives. You could take one wrong step, your Achilles gives. It's just, it, it, it's, you never know when an injury is going to happen. And so if you were to play, I mean, shoot, that goes against Tomlin's mantra of like playing in your fear of like not playing in your fears. That is the, the example of playing in your fears. If you are doing something, if the forefront of your mind is, I might get hurt doing this, like in the middle of a play, your head is in the wrong space. Again, I'm going to go to a self, you know, to, to a, like a, like a personal example for, for me, you know, and again, I'm not playing on a professional level anywhere near. I'm playing at a recreational level, but whenever I hurt my foot playing hockey, I blocked a shot. Whenever I was in the, in the process of going to block that shot, I didn't think I'm about to get injured here or I might get injured here. There's always the kind of like subconscious, like this might hurt a lot because I'm about to block a puck with my body. But there's no, you, you never, I mean, shoot, I've been blo- I've been playing in that league for 10 years and blocked a lot of shots, gotten a lot of really gigantic bruises, never gotten like a bone type injury. And that's all it took, but that wasn't in the forefront of my mind. And as you go into higher levels of play, high school football, college football, professional level of any sport, your That's why they get compensated the way they get compensated because you're putting your body at risk literally every single play, every single time you step on the field. That comes with the territory. That's why you get paid the money you get paid. That's why when you sign your rookie contract, it's a second round pick. You're guaranteed an X amount of money because if for whatever reason you have a a career ending injury, at least you're compensated for it. Uh, I thought I was getting. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, oh are the lights going? Lights, lights are starting to go. Uh, so, mentioned, uh, you know, George can go work at a grocery. George can go work at Giant Eagle if uh, he doesn't want to get hurt. <laughs> and he can still get hurt working at Giant Eagle. Yeah, he can. There it is. Bad slips, there man. Is. Yeah, lights are yeah. going now, too. Um, okay, here's another thing that Mike Tomlin talked about. And it's easy to sit here and say, because he benched Chooks at core for, for what he said on the sideline against, was it Jacksonville? Glad you brought that up. Okay. Yes. So is there a double standard applied here? Because yep. Tomlin benched Chooks at core for, for yep. saying things that Mike Tomlin did not like to hear on that sideline, and that was that we should kneel the ball out and stuff like that. Giving up. And quitting. Chooks, Chooks, yeah. And Chooks was benched for that and mm-hmm. has not started a game since then. Now, George Pickens quitting on not one but two plays, being the Warren run and the Trubisky interception, um, and then giving a really weird effort on another Trubisky interception. Why isn't he getting benched for this? Tomlin said today, George Pickens is going to play Saturday. Yep, He's going to play, and he was asked why. Why do you feel it's appropriate to play George Pickens Saturday? And he started off the answer, the first sentence is, because, again, he's got talents, we want to utilize him. Yep. And then he goes on to say, quote, he's very much growth and development, but it would be the same if we were winning games or if he said appropriate things with you guys yesterday. Yep. So, I, look, let's just call it as it is. They're playing George Pickens because they think he's good enough and should be playing because of his talent. They think he's good enough to keep playing for all of this. Chooks and yeah. for in that in that scope in that vacuum was not good enough to keep playing for defiance and for quitting in that, in that respect, if you want to call it that. Yeah. It's uh, th- th- this is where, this is where you start to get, this is where you start to really start to question the culture and question where, where the Steelers way is, or if the Steelers way is dead, because you know, when you, the, you know, we, we've been trying, you know, we've taken a couple stabs at trying to define the Steelers way on here. You know, you've kind of said your definition. I've kind of said mine. And actually, since then, that just randomly came across on, on social media. And I don't think that's by accident. Uh, I saw one account. I don't remember who it was post Troy Polamalu's speech from his, you know, his Hall of Fame induction where he pretty much defined the Steelers way. And then I think about a play like this, and that flies in the face of anything that remotely resembles the Steelers' way. Um, that is putting yourself before the team. That is the antithesis of what being a Steeler 
is or what or, or how it is defined by those who have played for this team in the past. And I'm not saying that obviously as somebody who's played for the team or somebody who's been in that locker room as a player, but using words from those who have played and, and who know and know how to embody that. And I think that is where somebody else, and honestly, this shouldn't have even gone to Mike Tomlin. As soon as George Pickens did that, did what he did, that's an opportunity for somebody, anybody to pull George aside and be like, what in the heck are you doing? If I'm Najee Harris and I see that, shoot, if I'm Jalen Warren and I see that, I'm like, why in the heck aren't you blocking for me? Like, yeah. that, that's a legitimate question. And, it, and that's where you need leaders to step up because Najee plays the same position that Jalen does. And if Najee sees that and he's like, dog, you got you got to block for me, man. Like, oh, you're downfield yeah. blocked. Like, it's, it's – uh, dude, it, it's it, – it flies in the face of what 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 the Steelers' way is, and, and and players should have been able to handle that. But then, if players don't, for whatever reason, Mike Tomlin's got to put the put the put his foot down. He's got to he's got to, and the best way to to I mean, and he's he's never going to say what the discipline is, but the fact that Chooks gets benched for quitting, and George doesn't, that is a double standard, and it's a problem. Um. I, I saw somebody bring it up uh, probably too far back Excuse in the chat now. In. Excuse to put Broderick in. I saw that comment. I wanted to bring Yeah. Up. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, yeah, you have, it's an excuse to put Broderick in and, and that there's not a Broderick Jones behind George Pickens. I don't care. You have guys who, who can play. You have Allen Robinson. He's player. not, he's not great, but he's a veteran receiver. He can play. You got Calvin Austin who, I'm not saying that Calvin Austin is like the next coming of Tyree kill or anything, but he's got enough talent and skill that somebody needs to figure out how to do something with them. You know, it's not like he's some sort of scrub. You've got, you've got guys who can step up, even if you have to send a message. And right. Norseman says, honestly feel like the whole Pickens thing is being over-exaggerated. He blocks, he blocks badly for one game. We can point to seven games where he blocks well. Here's the large picture issue with that here, Norseman, okay? Consider the moment. Consider the circumstance, first off. The Steelers are 7-6 and six after they just lost two games to two win teams. The season is hanging by a thread at this stage. They're playing against another 7-6 and six team where if that other 7-6 and six team beats them, they take their playoff spot and the Steelers are out of the playoff chase. Not chase, but out of a playoff spot, per se. That play, now the Steelers did score. So they got they, that in that spectrum, they got away with it. Yeah. But it also comes on the coattails of Deontay Johnson's effort against the Bengals with the fumble. So this is, as Chris mentioned, a culture thing. This yeah. is not all totality of George Pickens thing. This is also a culture thing. So why, like Deontay Johnson explained why he didn't fall in the fumble, right? He should have fallen on it. He should have seen it. We all know that. Yeah. But that running play went to George's side. That running play was right behind him. Yeah. And it's the effort on the field, as Jim says here. Yeah, it's, on the it's, field it's, it's, not the, it's not just the, the, the fact of not wanting to. It's the effort. It's it's the not willing to do something, whatever whatever it is. Run a route over the middle. Um Block for a, you know, make a block downfield, whatever it is, you are not giving your all on that play. That's right. not, that's not an excuse. And I see somebody like somebody asked, like, if either one of us had, had played ball before, like, I don't see what that has to do with it. Like, n I played up, up to high school and that, that was the max I ever got. I didn't get like any kind of scholarship well, or anything, but okay, it, let, does, let it doesn't matter. This. Let me, let me relate this to something, okay? You're on the, George Pickens is on the field in moment. The play is on his side. The play is right behind him. Wouldn't you instinctively want to help? That This is just helping. This is just like yeah. human stuff at this stage. This is, that's my teammate. That's my guy right behind me. I need to help him get to the end zone, get yards, whatever it is. If you, we're going to, I'll use the grocery store as the example. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have to stock a shelf, and there is a shelf that is too high for you to reach, yeah. or there is an item that is too heavy for you to carry, you're going to ask for help. 
because you need the help, right? Mm -hmm. George Pickens could have been the guy that reaches the top shelf or that picks up that heavy item for Jalen Warren, and he didn't do it. He did not choose to do it. As Frank says, and it's as evidenced by what George said himself, he cares about himself. It was a business decision for himself. He said it himself. It's a Tank Dell situation. I didn't want to get hurt. I got out of the way because I didn't want to get hurt. And then he blames the media for everything else. That yeah, is that, a selfish thing. That, that, is was, a, that is a selfish act. That is not a helpful act. That's a selfish act. Yeah, it's 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 In not it, it's not taking any it's not taking any accountability for yourself. You know, and if it's if it's one thing where I mean, you, you know, we can talk about Deontay not looking at you know not wanting to, uh, you know, n- or not going after the fumble. You know, the way he spoke with the media compared to the way George spoke with the media afterward are night and day. Um, yeah. De- Deontay yeah. owned up to everything and, and said he wouldn't let something like that happen again. And you, and, and, and listen, um, big, big Mabe, listen, I don't want to be talking about this, man. I don't Neither want, do I would I. rather be, I would rather be talking about football. I would rather be talking about what's the, the X's and O's on the field. And listen, I'm not trying to crucify the guy. Believe me, I'm not. But like, he is giving us a reason to have to talk about this. Like we, he I don't. This to himself. I don't want to talk about this. I, I really, he really did. don't. And he but the pr- but the problem is, is that this is a this is like a, this is a, a symptom of the culture issues we are seeing with this team, and that is why. When you see the, the, you know, to kind of bring this into more of an X's and O's talk, when you see the disconnect, when you hear the coaches and players say we had a really good week at practice and we did this stuff really well, and then they get into a stadium on, on Saturday or Sunday, and then everything looks disjointed, everything looks, there's no flow, there's no urgency, there's nothing there. It's, 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 it's going through the motions at that. I, I'm hey, sure babe, this where is. Where have you been? Big Babe, where have you where have you been? We've done this. Talk. Big Babe says, talk about how bad Mitch is. Talk about Tom. Talk about how, how Dan, Dan Rooney, Rooney poisoned, poisoned the Steeler way. way. I don't Dan know about Rooney? Dan Rooney poisoning the Steeler way. Well, we've talked about how bad Dan. Mitch is. We talked about Mike Tomlin. So I don't know where you've been. I mean, I, I just don't know where you've been in that, in that case. Listen, George Pickens gave us something to talk about. George Pickens did this to himself. Okay, if he doesn't say, if he doesn't say what he said in the scope of. I just wanted to get out of the way because I didn't want to get hurt. When the Steelers could have scored a touchdown in a game they had to win. They had to win that football game. When he has that moment, he didn't He didn't come up to that moment. Yeah. He, he played way down to that moment. You know what? To satisfy big names, need, let's talk about actual football things like an injury report because that did just come out. So here's your, new, here's your news part, unobjectified part of the day. Okay, Kenny Pickett, limited, once again, on, on Wednesday. So he's, you know, still in the air for this weekend. A lot of uh, elevations as far as um, going from either did not play to limited or did not practice to full or limited to full. Um, Cam Hayward, full practice with the concussion. That's a very good sign as he works to clear out the protocol. Uh, Pat Farnmuth went from limited to full with a knee injury. So Pat in full. Roger Jones was full with an ankle injury. Uh, Najee Harris. Did not practice on uh, Tuesday, was in full today on Wednesday. So Najee back to full practice. Elijah Riley back to full practice as well in safety. Um, your did not practices, Trenton Thompson uh, with a neck issue. And then That's Minka, it. obviously, we already know he's out uh, as per Mike Tomlin. And then Isaac, Isaac Samala, pardon me, with the shoulder was upgraded to limited. So there is your injury report. Rather, uh, rather extensive, but... Good news regarding uh, what is it? Three six Steelers that some some good uh, trends though. I mean, with some guys were elevated, yeah, it's yeah. trending up. So we'll talk news. All right, you know what? Let's talk news. Screw it. Um, that's all. I, that's all I got on the news front today. Yeah, no. I mean, uh, look, listen, listen. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, and Chris knows this. When when George Pickens says what he says yesterday, the day after becomes all about reacting to that, because yeah. the Steelers had meetings this morning. The Steelers had a practice today. The Steelers had to get back on the field with that guy as soon as he's after he said what he said. And yeah, Mike Tomlin was requested 
and fulfilled the request. And yeah. six and a half out of the seven minutes he stood on the podium were addressing George Pickens. So, yeah, yeah we're going to talk about George Pickens today. I guess, and you know what? By the way, those that have listened for a while to this program, we've tried really hard to avoid it. Because some other people that, that either cover the Steelers here on the beat or, or the talking heads or whoever have brought up George Pickens' points before. And we've tried to avoid this because, quite frankly, he hasn't given us any reason to do this until yeah. now. George Pickens has left people like us with no choice. That's why we're here. Well, and again, like, you know, whenever there are certain things that uh, there are certain parts of the job that whenever you're either a beat reporter or if you're in, in the media of any kind where you have to do things you don't want to do, you know, you have to talk about s stories and other things you don't want to necessarily have to talk about. This is a situation like I, I don't want to sit here for a half hour and talk about George Pickens. Yeah, like all I've all I have to say, like my reaction yesterday was pretty much all I had to say about it. Um, but uh, Bob, I want to give it a rest, man. Like for real. And honestly, like, yeah, I mean, dude, like this is, this is, uh, I mean, again, I'm trying to put it in the scope of, it's not just a, uh, it's not just a, a George Pickens issue. This is a culture issue. And this is why, like, when, when we talk about the issues with this team, and again, I'm trying to put this in a more X's and O's situation. When you talk about the disconnect that you see, you know, from what supposed what is supposedly happening on the practice field to the disjointed crap product that they're putting on the field, the the product that you either pay your hard earned money to go watch on this on the on you know the North Shore, or that you pay your hard earned money to watch whatever streaming service you can or TV service you can to watch the game on TV. Like that, that product is absolute crap and it's disjointed right now. And there's a reason why. And well, there are actually a lot of reasons why. And one of the main reasons that I'm seeing from all of the evidence is a culture issue. The, the crack in the foundation of this is not a good, healthy football team right now. And this is a the latest and w probably maybe even one of the worst symptoms that we're seeing of a bad football culture. That is yeah. that that is the, the the broader scope seeing the big picture as the title of the episode is that I'm trying to put this in. I'm not trying to crucify George Pickens, the player. I'm definitely not trying to crucify him as as, as, as a person. That's crap. I'm I'm here to talk about football. I'm not here to talk about who he is as a person or that he's an immature person or anything like that. That that's crap. That's not my place. I'm not and just in life, I don't judge people like that. But when I'm trying to put this in a football perspective, I'm not trying to 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 bury the guy because he's it's just it's it's a this is just another another symptom of this team is in in some serious need of massive change. My heater uh, shut off, so now I don't have to yell anymore. Cool, nice. I can speak in an actual tone this time uh, with about I don't know five minutes left of the show. And by the way, Alan Robinson addressed this this morning too. Yeah, I like this, I liked this, I liked his comments on it. If this is the guy you want to address something like this, he's in that yeah. locker room. He plays football, so and he's been around for a long time and has succeeded for a while in doing this. And Alan Robinson said, "Look, like they got to understand the big picture. They have to understand like the situations that lead into the big picture." Um. And he, he said he wants George to have a long career and wants to be able, you know, to have that experience. And in moment, the big picture has to be analyzed and has to be studied. And doing what he did on that play is contrary to the big picture. Why is that contrary to the big picture? Because, again, George said it himself. He did not want to get himself injured. He said it himself. So again, why does this come up? Because of what he said. It all roots back to what he said. That's why we're doing this today. Look, tomorrow on Thursday, we're not going to be talking about this. No. We're there is there, there is one comment I want to bring up here, and it's whenever I start Brent, to thank get... Thank you for the five gifted, by uh, the way. It's whenever I... Yes, appreciate it, Brent. If you if you uh, grab one, appreciate, uh, give Brent a shout out. Uh, as soon as I get called something, that's when the gloves come off, man. Big Mabe. Um, you've never been in the locker room. If we were winning, you wouldn't talk about culture. You're sensationalists. 
Uh, first off, I think it's hilarious when fans say we. There's no we there. It's the team. I've never been you we are guy. not on I've never the team. Been we guy. You are not on the team. Stop saying we. Okay. Kind of ironic uh, there. If you're talking about they you've never been in the locker never room. Been in the locker room. Yeah, you've never if, been in the locker room. If we were winning. If you yeah, so kind of like if you're saying like I've never been in the locker room. Like if you're talking about as a player, no, of course not. If you're talking about just physically being in the locker room, been in there a lot, a lot more than you have. Um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I took that comment away to put up uh, a little plug for Matt Williamson here. Um, here it is. Look, by the way, I'm in that locker room as a reporter, as a journalist. Yeah, and, and uh, we're we're and there to talk about. Day. Yeah, it's. It's just, it's crap. And you man. know what? If, like, the, if the Steelers were winning, we would be talking about culture in a positive way. We'd be talking about how healthy things are, how guys are working together, how guys are analyzing, as Alan Robinson said, the Alan Robinson said, the big picture. We would be talking about culture in a positive way. So, and, and that's what does get. Think about this, okay, Chris? After every single Super Bowl, right? When the game ends, when you're watching Fox, CBS, whatever the channel, the game's on. When they interview Patrick Mahomes or they interview Nick Foles or they interview whoever, don't these players all say the same thing? We have a great group of guys. We have a group of guys that came together and understood the greater good. We have a group of guys that wanted to pull through together and found ways to support each other. We were brotherhood. How, how often do you hear the phrase brotherhood? Like, you don't hear that here. You just mm -hmm. don't. Like, like, that's what winning teams do. They talk about that stuff. They live through that stuff. This team does not live through that. Period. That's why we're talking about it. Go, go, go back and watch Troy Polamalu's Hall of Fame speech and hear him talk about the Steelers' way, because that right there. I mean, if you if you want to hear anybody who has played for the Steelers in the last twenty five to thirty years describe what a Steeler should be, Troy Polamalu is probably the epitome of that. Like I can't think of a player who probably better embodies it than than he does, because he yeah. was. I mean, he's one of the greatest safeties to ever play this game, and might be the most humble athlete I've ever watched. Just as a sports fan, probably one of the most humble athletes I've ever watched. And that that and so like what he says about it doesn't align with anything that you watch on Sundays or that you read about whenever we are in the locker room. I'm not there obviously anymore, but whenever I was there covering the team last year, or when Corey's covering the team this year, or when DK is writing about it, cause he's in the locker room too. When we're, when we're writing about what we see and what we talk about with players, that does not embody anything that Troy talks about or talked about in his speech. And that is, that is why we bring that up. Why, where is, where is that? Why is the when, when things are going wrong with this team? Because obviously you care, or you wouldn't be watching us talking about it, or you wouldn't be reading about it elsewhere. You want your team to succeed. We're trying to we're trying to help decipher ways to figure out why this team might be sucking right now because they are in a bad bad place. Mm -hmm. Jedi says it here. You can have a valid opinion on something no matter what your profession is. The you don't play ball thing is stupid. If you have For two real. eyeballs, you can Thank see you. selfishness from George. Again, I bring it to the grocery store thing. Y your coworker or wherever you work, office, whatever it is, your coworker needs help with something. If if you can help, then help. It, that's human stuff. That's human just like edge right there that kicks in. That's societal stuff that kicks in. So it's 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 a negative effect on this locker room because of that. Like, it, I, I don't know. I, it's 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 something that like my brain needs to be rewired on because like I don't want to be talking about it either. Like Chris said, like we'd rather be talking about finding ways to beat the Bengals and Jamar Chase not playing and Kenny Pickett, the starting quarterback, might play this week. We don't know yet. Like the starting quarterback, Mason Rudolph might be the quarterback. So, yeah, we're not allowed to uh, criticize the president. You know. <laughs> I'm not going to criticize anybody that I don't do. So the Pirates just signed Yamamoto. Okay, Hodge, let's uh, let's calm down on that one. Unless they really did, then in that case, wow. Uh, but I don't think uh, the Pirates signed Yamamoto. Uh, Probably Paul not. Steve season coming up. Okay, I have to go to work. Um, plenty more to come on DK Pittsburgh Sports dot com. DK and Ramon in about 25 minutes for the Ramon Foster show. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that is going to be a juicy one. I am sure. Um, I think. 
Chris and I have uh, no need to give final thought as this whole no, show I've is given all, one big I've one. Given, I've given all my thoughts today. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Chris, those that are listening, we wiped the slate clean today. Okay? Tomorrow, I, you might be right, Rick. No Ramon show until tomorrow. You might be right on that. Yep, yep. Thursday um, is the uh, one that's coming back. Thank you. Okay, so for us today, we got out what we needed to get out. We talked about what we needed to. No, it's it's Thursday, Evan. It's Thursday. We talked about what we needed to. Tomorrow, on Thursday, it's the final practice of the week. Let's talk about Cincinnati. Let's talk about Kenny Pickett. Let's talk about how this offense finds a way to score points. Let's talk about how this defense finds a way to limit the Bengals. Let's talk about how the Steelers can find a way to find a way to win. He's Chris Halleck. I'm Corey Chris, and this has been the Southside Beat on a Wednesday. We're on to Thursday. Cheers, everybody. Have a great day.